For those of you who don't know, or are maybe not super familiar with the book industry, Audible controls roughly 63% of the audiobook industry in the United States. How, in a space where things like Apple and Spotify and even YouTube exist, does one company control 63% of the market share? The answer, of course, is Amazon. Amazon owns Audible, and they are really, really good at getting their hooks into a market and then using that foothold to strangle their competition. In the case of audiobooks, they license the books they have on their shelves to other platforms, so while you thought that you were listening to that book on Apple, a lot of the time Apple is simply streaming it to you through their app from its original source on Audible. And this is happening all over the market, it's not just an Apple thing. So because of this near monopoly that Audible has, they pretty much get to dictate what they choose to pay authors for their books, and they are notorious for their terrible revenue splits particularly for indie published books and books that refuse to go exclusive on their platform. So this is where Brandon Sanderson comes in. At the end of 2022, Sanderson posted on his website that his secret project audiobooks would be available for Kickstarter backers in the biggest Kickstarter campaign in history, I might add, as raw audio files on Spotify and on Speechify, but not on Audible. The financial loss of this decision cannot be overstated, but Sanderson's distaste for Audible's abysmal rates for indie authors and his willingness to put his money where his mouth is drove him to stick to that decision, even knowing that the cost would be steep. And it actually worked. Brandon Sanderson, a fantasy book author, got into a staring contest with one of the biggest companies in the world and Amazon blinked. So I want to go over Sanderson's part of this whole situation real quick, and the way that I'm going to do that is to show you what kind of what he said and then give my opinions at the end. All of the documents that I'm going to be reading from or referencing to are linked down below, so make sure that you check out those original links so that you have the original source material. I also want to point out I'm not a Brandon Sanderson fangirl. It's not that I think there's anything wrong with him, I just haven't gotten around to reading his books. I couldn't tell you what I think of the guy's writing. What I do know is that he does a lot for authors, and not just like himself and the people around him, but just indie authors in general, and fantasy authors in general. This isn't the first time that we've seen this particular author, one of the biggest fantasy authors in the world, I might add take a stance against things that feel unjust or feel unfair. Brandon Sanderson basically gets up in the morning and decides to be the change he wants to see in the world, and that's a pretty big deal. So the first article we're going to talk about is the Sanderson 2022 um, State of Sanderson Address. Now this is like an annual sort of recap post that he makes on his website. On the 11th, 10th or 11th of each month, a book goes to backers. We will put up the audiobooks for sale. They will be on several services, but I recommend the two I mentioned above, Spotify and Speechify. The books will not be on Audible for the foreseeable future. This is a dangerous move on my part. I don't want to make an enemy of Amazon who owns Audible. I like the people at Audible and have had several meetings with them this year. But Audible has grown to a place where it's very bad for authors. It's a good company doing bad things. I'm not sure I like this language here. Uh, companies are amoral, they are not sentient, they don't make choices. Companies are an amalgamation of the people that run them. Audible, as an organization, did not make this choice. The people who run Audible made this choice. This was a decision made by human beings to take advantage of other human beings. Again, this is dangerous to say. And I don't want to make anyone feel guilty. I have an Audible account and a subscription. It's how my dyslexic son reads most of the books he reads. Audible did some great things for books, notably spearheading the audio revolution, which brought audiobooks down to a reasonable price. I like that part a lot. However, they treat authors very poorly, particularly indie authors. The deal Audible demands of them is unconscionable, and I'm hoping that providing market forces and talking about the issue with a megaphone will encourage change in a positive direction. 
If you want details, the current industry standard for a digital product is to pay the creator 70% on a sale. That's what Steam pays your average creator for a game sale. It's what Amazon pays on eBooks. It's what Apple pays for apps downloads. And they're getting heat for taking as much as they are, rightly so. Audible pays 40%, almost half. For a frame of reference, most brick and mortar stores take around 50% on a retail product. Audible pays indie authors less than a bookstore does when a bookstore has storefronts, sales staff, and warehousing to deal with. I knew things were bad, which is why I wanted to explore other options with the Kickstarter, but I didn't know how bad. Indeed, if indie authors don't agree to be exclusive on Audible, they get dropped from 40% to a measly 25%. Buying an audiobook through Audible instead of from another site literally costs the author money. Again, I like the people at Audible. I like a lot about Audible. I don't want to go to war, but I have to call them out. This is shameful behavior. I'll bet you every person there will say they are, are a book lover, and yet they are squeezing indie authors to death. I had several meetings with them, and I felt like I could see their embarrassment in their responses and actions. Though, that's just me reading into it, not a reference to anything they said. Here's the problem. I'm sorry to go on at length, but I'm passionate about this. There are no true competitors to Audible. Sure, there are other companies that can buy your book, but they all just list on Audible and then take a percentage on top of what Audible is taking. Apple, their books come in large part from Audible. Recorded books, they are an awesome company whom I love, but their biggest market is Audible. Macmillan, my publisher, they just turn around and put the books on Audible. I had a huge problem finding anyone who, if I sold a secret project to them, wouldn't just put them on Audible. And while I can't tell you the details, all of their deals were around the same low rates that Audible is paying indie authors. Audible runs this town, and they set the rates for everyone, everywhere. I had one seller who really wanted to work with me, who will remain unnamed, who is consistently a only able to pay authors 10% on a sale for a digital product. It's wild. I found two companies only in all the deals I investigated who are willing to take on Audible, Spotify and Speechify. My Spotify deal is unfortunately locked behind an NDA, as is common with these kinds of deals. All I can say is that they treated me well, and I'm happy. Here's where the gold star goes to Speechify. Let me tell you, they came to me and said, full of enthusiasm for the project, that they give me 100%. I almost took it. But then I asked the owner, who is a great guy, if this was a deal he could give to other authors, or if it was the deal only Brandon Sanderson could get. He considered that then said he'd be willing to do industry standard, 70%, for any author who lists their books directly on Speechify a la carte. So I told him I wanted that deal, if he agreed to let me make the terms of our deal public. I've made enough on this Kickstarter, I don't need to squeeze people for every penny. But what I do want to do is find a way to provide options for authors. I think that by agreeing to these two deals, I'm doing that. We have an open offer from Speechify, and we have Spotify trying very hard to break Audible's near monopoly. So I just want to break in real quick one more time. Uh, I appreciate that Speechify has made this 70% offer and has been willing to do so publicly, which means that you and me and uncle, you know, Jim Bob and whomever else that you know that writes books can go and get the same deal from Speechify. I think that's awesome. Spotify is a little iffier for me, um, not because of the audiobook deals that they make, but one, I'm not a huge fan of their audiobook model that you get with their subscription. Uh, it feels very like system gamey to me to get you to buy more monthly credits in like a sort of FOMO fog. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll make sure that I link a video down below that kind of talks about Spotify's uh, audiobook model and, and how that sort of works. Uh, it's something that we can go into on a different video if that's something you guys are interested in. Let me know down in the comments. I'm only just sort of starting to wade into the actual book pricing and marketing stuff, so I am learning as I go. If you would like to learn with me, uh, we can certainly do research and deep dives on things like uh, Spotify's audiobooks. Uh, so far from what I've seen, not only do I not like their client facing models, so the people listening to the audiobooks, I'm not a big fan of the way they set that up, but anything that you put on Spotify is subject to audio scraping. So, uh, and this isn't going to matter to anybody who's not like rabid about AI, <laughs> Ian, I'm, I'm talking to you here. Um, but basically Spotify has a disclosure when you use their software that anything that you list on their platform 
can be scraped for voice AI generation. So if I go and put podcast, for example, on Spotify, they can go and not that anyone would want my voice today, as you can hear, I'm a little froggy. Uh, but if they did, for some reason, if they wanted my voice and they wanted to model an AI model voice off of me, they could do that because I have put my voice on their platform. They don't own my voice, but they do own the rights to scrape it and use it to train their AI. So uh, I really, really dislike that. I think that uh, your voice, licensing your voice, using your voice for AR and models or using your artwork or using your books. Uh, I don't have a problem with people doing that as long as they're doing it consciously, as long as they're doing it on purpose, as long as it's something that, uh, you know, informed consent is coming into. Uh, we, we're all vehement about making sure that, that there's informed consent in the bedroom, but when we're talking about our other forms of bodily autonomy, the preservation of our voice, the preservation of our image, the preservation of our uh, likeness and our thoughts and feelings and ideas that we put down in books or papers that we write, uh, everybody seems to get a little a little iffy on that. Um, it's a bodily autonomy issue for me. It's a moral issue for me. So I, I'm not sure about using Spotify in that way while they've got that agreement in place. So anyway, that's just my two cents. All right, let's get back to Sanderson's articles. I hope this will rejuvenate the industry because I do like Audible. I worry that they'll stagnate, strangling their creators and end up burning away because of it. Real competition is good for everyone, including the companies themselves. Lack of it leads to a slow corporate death. So I'm not putting these books on Audible. Not for a year at least, maybe longer. I need to be able to make a statement, and I realize this makes it inconvenient for many of you. I'm sorry, I really am. And I know it's going to cost me a ton of sales, because right now, people tend to just buy on the platform they're comfortable with. The Lost Metal pre-orders were 75% audio almost all through Audible. I know many of my fans, probably hundreds of thousands of them, simply won't buy the books because it's super inconvenient to go somewhere else. Indeed, Audible locks you into that mentality by making you sign up for a subscription to get proper prices on audiobooks, which then makes you even more hesitant to shop around. But please take the time to try these books somewhere else. I've priced them at $15. The current price of a monthly subscription to Audible at their most common price point. You can get these books with no subscription and no credit. Though you do have to buy on Speechify or Spotify's websites, and not through their apps. Because of monopolistic practices by certain providers, something I'm not qualified to say much about currently, besides this rant is already too long. Each book you buy somewhere else will help break open this field. It will lead to lower prices, fewer subscription models, and better pay for authors. Plus, these partners I've gone to really deserve the support for being willing to try to change things. Whew. Okay, rant over. Let's talk about print books. So again, this was in 2022. This is, you know, after he made his big announcement that he's doing uh, the, the Year of Sanderson, the Big Secret Projects. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I will make sure that I link his announcement for that down below. Uh, Brandon Sanderson basically wrote a bunch of books in secret in tandem with his already shockingly rigorous writing schedule. And, and decided he was going to release them all in one year. It was like four or five books and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, it's it's a really chonky thing that he chose to do in, I think it was 2023, was the year of Sanderson. So last year. So earlier this month, in March of 2024, Brandon Sanderson made an updated blog post about this audible thing that he had posted about back in 2022. It reads as follows. Again, this article is going to be linked down below. It will be lab labeled uh, Sanderson Audio 2 or something like that. Hey y'all, Brandon here, with what I consider to be some pretty exciting news. Many of you may remember what I wrote last year about my worries regarding audiobook royalties, particularly for independent authors. You can read it here, but some of the main bullet points are as follows. Point one, I seriously worried about the opacity of reporting to authors about audio sales. We didn't know what a sale meant how much of an audible credit was given to authors when a book sold via one, and how royalties were being accounted. Point two, I felt that the industry was taking advantage of authors because of their lack of powerful corporate interests to advocate for them. 
While video game creators and musicians get 70 to 80 percent, 88 percent in fact on two major platforms, of a sale of their products in a digital form, Audible was paying as low as 25 percent, with the high end being instead 40 percent. I felt I could have gotten a better deal for myself, but the entire state of the industry was seriously concerning to me, so I made the difficult decision not to release the four secret projects on Audible, costing me a large number of sales to instead try to bolster healthy competition in the space, highlighting some of the smaller Audible competitors. So this is basically a quick recap of that article that we just read or that post that we just read. I hoped that this wake-up call would prompt change. I didn't refuse to put my books on Audible out of retribution or to declare war. I did it because I wanted to shine as powerful a light as I knew how on a system that highly favored the audio distributors over the authors. I was convinced that the people at Audible really did love books and writers, and that with the right stand taken, I could encourage them towards positive change. I'm happy to say that this stand has borne some fruit. I spent this past year in contact with Audible and other audio distributors, and have pushed carefully, but forcefully, for them to step up. A few weeks ago, three key officers high in Audible structure flew to Dragonsteel offices and presented for us a new royalty structure they intended to offer to independent writers and smaller publishers. This new structure doesn't give everything I wanted, and there's still a lot of work to do, but it is encouraging. They showed me new minimum royalty rates for authors, and they are, as per my suggestions, improved over the previous ones. Note that he says improved, not corrected. Moreover, this structure will move to a system like I've requested, a system that pays more predictably on each credit spent and that is more transparent for authors. Audible will be paying royalties monthly instead of quarterly and will provide a spreadsheet that better shows how they split up the money received by their authors. This part looked really good to me as I understand their decisions. I tried poking holes in the system looking for ways that it could be exploited, and I found that each issue I raised had already been considered. This doesn't mean it's going to be perfect and people smarter than me might still find problems that I didn't. However, I think everyone is going to agree that the new system is better. We will be better able to track, for example, how Audible is dividing money between books purchased with a credit and books listened to as part of their Audible Plus program. It's all very technical, but I have to say I'm impressed with the effort they've made. The people there listen to my complaints and have tried to improve. I'm not at liberty to explain in its entirety their new structure right now as they're still tweaking it, but they did say I could announce its existence, and that I could promise new, improved royalties are on the horizon. Now before we go too far, I do anticipate a few continuing issues with the final product. I want to manage expectations by talking about those below. Point 1. What I've seen doesn't yet bring us to the 70% royalty that I think is fair and which other similar industries get. Point 2. Audible continues to reserve the best royalties for those authors who are exclusive to their platform, which I consider bad for consumers as it stifles competition. In the new structure, both exclusive and non-exclusive authors will see an increase, but the gap is staying about the same. Point three, authors continue to have very little, basically no control over pricing. Whatever the cover price of books is largely doesn't matter. Books actually sell for the price of a credit in an Audible subscription. Authors can never raise prices along slight inflation. An Audible credit costs the same as it did almost two decades ago, with no incentive for Audible to raise it, lest it lose customers to other services willing to lead loss to draw customers over. Again, we're talking back to once you get a customer on your platform in a subscription-based model, it's almost impossible to lose them. You really have to make them angry and really have to remove their value for their dollars spent before they start shopping around. See all of the pricing increases in Netflix over the past few years, and every time they do it, everybody's up in arms about, oh, I'm leaving, it's too expensive. 
and still somehow Netflix consistently reports increased annual sales. Back to the article. These are things I'd love to see change. However, this deal is a step forward and is an attempt to meet me part way. Indeed, even incremental changes can mean a lot. When I was new in this business, my agent spent months arguing for a 2% change in one of my print royalties, because every little bit helps. These improvements are going to be larger than 2% increases. Because of this, I will be bringing the secret projects to Audible very soon. I consider Audible to be a positive force in the industry, and I've decided to shake hands with them. Audible has promised to release their new royalty system for all authors sometime in 2024, though I should be testing it in the next month or so. And, if you'll allow me a moment, I'd like to say that this feels good. It isn't what I wanted, but I'd begun to think that nothing would ever change, that even my voice, loud though it can be, wouldn't be enough. Yet change is possible. I know that there are plenty of people out there who are tired of hearing about me and my works. I'm sorry. I do have quite the group of evangelists, and we can be an enthusiastic lot. However, for better or worse, I am one of the best-selling authors in the world. Historically, one of the best ways to change things in my industry is for authors like myself to force it to happen. Feeling this responsibility, when I was first talking to Audible about these issues in 2022, I made it very clear that I wasn't just seeking some quiet deal that gave me an individual advantage. I wanted to see a positive change for all authors. And while I don't think I can take sole credit, I do feel like my efforts this year have had a significantly positive effect. Soon, every independent author who publishes on Audible and maybe eventually traditionally published authors with the huge publishers, depending on what New York decides, will be getting a larger cut of the profit, with more transparency on how that cut is allocated. So, for those who have been waiting until Audible had the secret projects, you'll get your chance soon. I hope you'll support them and support Audible for their decisions. And thank you to all of you who shared the news about my problems with the audio industry last year. I believe that pressure really did help. This is a victory for all of us, because happier authors able to make a better living, particularly those authors who are struggling in the midlist trenches, make for a more vibrant world for everyone. TLDR, Brandon Sanderson took on the largest audiobook platform in the world, and in fact, one of the largest companies in the world. And one? I feel like this is so inspiring. I was aware of the Audible issue um, back when I very first started writing, uh, once you first start delving into, okay, well, I'm going to write a book. Now, how do I do this? How do I publish? How do I, you know, uh, the issue with Audible, the Audible issue, uh, comes up pretty immediately once you start looking into audio books and, and that sort of thing. And I had already decided if I was going to self-publish uh, that I wouldn't be using Audible, that I would just put my stuff on YouTube. And it, it's a double dip for me. You guys get the audio books for free and I get to capitalize on it on my channel with the extra views, which drives more traffic. So that that's a win-win for me, um, especially given that Audible wasn't going to be paying great rates anyway. For those of you who aren't super into publishing or don't write or have no interest in it or haven't delved into it yet, uh, having an audiobook recorded, edited, parsed, cleaned up, all of that is, is one of the most expensive parts of self-publishing a book. It's something a lot of indie authors choose not to do just by sheer dint of the uh, price barrier. Um, because, you know, when you're publishing your own book, you have to pay for everything yourself up front, and not everybody has that kind of liquid cash just sitting around. Voice acting is expensive, and it should be. It's a skill that you learn and hone, and no small bit of talent that not everybody has access to. That doesn't make it more accessible to people who don't have that kind of upfront capital. 
to then have the major platform that everybody uses turn around and take all the money, all the income, all the royalties from your audiobook sales, really remove the financial incentive for indie authors in particular, unless they're really big names to record audiobooks, which is a shame because it cuts off an entire arm of the book market. I think it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what the balance on those rates are. I have a feeling they are not going to be quite as uh, hopeful as Brandon Sanderson's naturally optimistic attitude would uh, read. Um, when when people see increase, they're thinking like, oh, it's going to jump up to 50%. Oh, it's going to jump up to 60%. It's not. It'll be like, instead of 25 and 40, it'll be like 35 and 50. But you know what? 10% is 10%. 5% is 5% and $20 is $20. So anyway, I thought that this was all really interesting. I And I find one man using his massive platform to enact change, to push for the things he believes in, to stand up to quote unquote, the man. Um, it, and, and to actually see fruit born from that is tremendously inspiring. Anyway, that's all I've got on this one. I hope that you found it as interesting as I did. We will keep an eye on this as it develops, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and of course, if you like the way that I present information, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. You can find all of my social media contacts in the description, and of course, if you want to keep up with me and the progress I'm making on my current novel, you can do that at effiewritesbooks.com. Thank you so much for watching, have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.